Good evening, everyone, and welcome to Gundam News. And this week, we got a few really surprising announcements from Iron Blooded Orphans, uh, courtesy from the upcoming Order Hunt or Urzu Hunt mobile game. Now, not only did we get new Iron Blooded Orphans machines, but they're even getting regular release model kits. And especially because they're from like Iron Blooded Orphans Mobile Suits variations, when I saw them, I totally thought they were going to be premium Bandai, but nope. As I'm recording this video, pre orders are live on normal websites, so I will have them linked down below. So, first up, we have the Zeke Rune, a high performance mobile suit that used the Valkyrie frame. Its focus was on high mobility and a high power output, and it was even expected that it would revolutionize the battlefield. There was only one problem. The Gundam frame was developed at around the same time, and it would be completely overshadowed by those Gundam frames. So then combined with the fact that it was rolled out near the end of the war, um, would mean that only a few units would ever be produced, and even fewer would see combat. The model kit then seems to be a mostly accurate representation with that very nice looking Valkyrie rapier and its dedicated holding hand that is on an angle to make it look that little bit better. Although, frankly, that Valkyrie rapier looks more like a miniaturized lance to me. But whatever, the thing that I'm the most interested in is the Valkyrie round shield and whether or not its gimmick with those... Um, things that are on the edges of the cross are going to shoot out is actually going to be included. Like, you can see it in action in the promotional video for the Order Hunt mobile game, but so far, none of the images of the model kit show it. But whatever the case might be, the model kit will cost you 1,760 yen, 15 US, and is slated for a June release. Next up then is the Schwalbe Grey's Shikuraze Custom a mobile suit that its pilot yoinked when he or she decided to desert Gallarhorn. This machine was then modified by trimming down the armaments, overhauling the existing thrusters, and adding an extra one on its derriere. And based on the images, we can tell that it'll come with a shield and two handguns, with bayonet, nice, but the description also seems to hint that it will come with other weapons as well. Then, just like the Zeke Rune, this thing will cost you 1,760 yen, 15 US, but releases one month earlier in May of 2022. And then finally, there was also a new Gundam unveiled, the Gundam Asmodeus. There are no records of the thing ever being used in battle, so it's believed that it was lost without seeing any combat. As a result, this is most likely how it looked 300 years ago. The reason then why it took so long for anyone to find this thing is that it somehow ended up in a debris zone that was really hard to access. Otherwise, that neon yellow color that it has probably would have caused it to be found in like a second or so. Unappealing color choices aside then, it does come with some interesting gimmicks. Through parts forming, the grand tonfus on the arm can extend, a machine gun can be mounted on the back skirt, although they don't specify if it actually comes with this one or if you gotta get it from one of the other Iron Blooded Orphans kits. Uh, the feet have extending claws and it's also got the Giganto Javelin, Giganto Javelin, however you want to pronounce that. And at 20,090 yen, a little under 20 US, it is the most expensive one of the three and this one is slated for an April release. And then alongside these new Iron Blooded Orphans kits, we also got an overview of the other upcoming Gunpla. Now, we do already know about these three, but for two of them, we did get some new information. In April, it is the entry grade new Gundam for 1,100 yen, 10 US. In May, it is the full mechanics Raider Gundam for 5,500 yen, 50 US. And in June, the real grade God Gundam for 3,850 yen, 35 US. Now, the new Gundam is the one that didn't give us anything new. We already knew everything that there was to know about it. Then for the God Gundam, we got a few new images, but well, they didn't really show us anything we didn't know already. But then for the Raider, 
we got a bunch of new information. And the first thing I'm gonna say is every single image does a really good job of showing just how detailed this thing is going to be. Although the one thing that I cannot unsee is how it looks to me like the beam cannon is just like rammed into the mouth. Um, but anyways, um, they also show off the transformation, which is probably what is either going to make or break this kit. And when it came to the high grade, it certainly broke the thing. Um, what I really like then is the mechanism on the inside of the Mjolnir for the wire. Like, not only is it realistic, but it's probably also really useful for, like, not losing the wire. By the way, I found the wire for my Infinite Justice. Um, and of course, they also couldn't not show the Raider Gundam carrying the Calamity Gundam on top of it. And even if you don't have a spare action base, it'll also come with a tiny display base for the Raider in mobile armor mode. And then for the final piece of Gunpla news, we have something quite special. A Supreme branded Master Grade RX-78 II version 3.0. This thing will go on sale on the 18th, and it's a pretty interesting looking thing. On the outside we have clear red, and on the inside we have an inner frame made from recycled plastic, or as we know it, EcoPla. And as you've probably already noticed, the shield is newly molded to have Supreme on it, and it also comes with a bunch of marking stickers that are all red which is probably going to look really good on a red model kit. Fortunately, we also get another sticker sheet that just has a bunch of Supreme stickers on it, uh, just in case you forgot that this was for the Supreme collaboration. The box is also quite nice, being very reminiscent of the old 80s box arts. Then on to the action figure news, and we're starting off strong with everyone's favorite AK-47 wielding transformable mobile suit. I'm sure most of you watching have seen the prototype for the Metal Robot Damashi Rigzi Custom, but it's now been officially announced that it will go on sale. Reservations are starting on the 17th, which is around the time that this video should go live. And then the other thing that has been confirmed to go on sale is the Robot Damashi 08th MS Team Option Set Number 2 version anime. And alongside that announcement, we also got a look at everything that's in the set. Uh, previously we had a quick description, but now we also have an image to go along with that. So we get a hover truck, a sensor arm for the truck, a sensor pole thing, a tent that attaches to the truck, a table, three 08th MS Team squad members, a V-fin that I guess is slightly different from the one you get with the uh, regular Gundam ground type, a gym head, two extra armor plates to make the reinforced ground shield, and a dop with some option parts. It's got landing gear and also two extra wing parts. And more information on the set, like the actual release date, will be announced soon. But what you could pre-order then this week was the Robot Damashi Ground Gundam Desert Specification, who had its pre-orders opened on the 14th for 7,150 yen, around 65 US, and this Ground Pounder with all of its accessories will be coming your way in April of 2022. And then finally, Gashapon Senshi Forte 15 will be appearing in Gashapon machines all across Japan in May of 2022. The main theme is Gundam Wing, but as with all of these figures, there's always going to be one completely random thing in there, and this time around, it is the Dom with its giant bazooka. The wing Gundam figures you can spin then are the Wing Zero with its twin buster rifle, the Epion with its beam saber and heat whip, the Leo in alliance colors with optional shield, space backpack and standard issue machine gun, the Leo in space colors with normal type beam rifle, shorty beam rifle and a mega beam cannon, and an accessory set that consists of a base, the twin buster rifle but separated, a beam saber for the Wing Zero, a beam saber for the Leo and a heat sword for the Dom. Overall, they do look really nice, but 
I find something a bit off about the proportions of the Leo's head. Like, maybe it's the angle, but usually I really like super deformed Leos, but with this one, I'm just not really feeling it. But for 400 yen a spin, you'll be able to get one, or for 5,280 yen, 45 US, you can get a 12 pack at P Bandai. In short gaming news then, Gundam Battle Operation 2 has started its Bato Ope Winter Festival 2021 with various rewards linked to the gacha system and alongside of this they're also holding a welcome campaign for new players and also returning players where they can earn extra XP, CP and DP. And then they also announced that from December 23rd until December 30th, they will be holding a Christmas event where by simply logging in, you'll be able to get a new snowman ball and the old Christmas items which are shown in this image here will also be obtainable in some way. Also, you'll be able to perform a snowball fight in your base camp by wearing one of these items and then pressing square. As for the things we could get this week then, on the 15th the entry grade strike light package version was released for 550 yen around 5 US. And the light of course refers to its light loadout. In addition to the head mounted Vulcans, this version of the strike only comes with two armor schneiders. Just like it did in its first animated appearance. Although in the promotional images they do confirm that it is compatible with the new Ale Striker pack. Which then makes me wonder, when are they finally going to put out a new high grade launcher and sword pack? On the 16th then we got a bunch of water slide decals for 550 and a piece around 5 US, the high grade Gundam 00 movie general purpose number 1, high grade Gundam 00 movie general purpose number 2, high grade Nightingale, real grade Force Impulse, real grade Zeong and real grade high new Gundam. And then finally for some reading material, you could get Model Graphics' Gundam Archives featuring Gundam Sentinel UC-0088 or the Weekly Mobile Suit Bible featuring the Sumo. And then in other news, in collaboration with Romago, Romago Swiss, Gundam will be releasing two types of limited edition watches in Hong Kong and Macau. You can either get the blue Omro Ray watch or the more subdued Earth Federation Space Forces watch. And just hold on to your seat when I tell you about the price. 19,800 Hong Kong dollars, which is around 2,500 US dollars. I'm not so much shocked by the price as I'm underwhelmed with how little they cared about the design of these, admittedly, very expensive watches. The Omro Ray one is fine, having RX-782 on there makes sense, having a Gundam at the back of the watch also makes sense, he's the pilot, it's nice to have that on there. But then the Earth Federation Space Forces watch, which is, as they themselves state, designed to be something worn by a federal officer. So why does it still say RX-78 II on there and why does it still have the Gundam head on there if it's designed to be something that would be worn by a generic Earth Federation Space Forces officer? Why not just have EFSF on the side and why not have like a fancy version of the Federation's emblem or of the flag on the back? Again, instead of having a very specific thing on there for one person. But whatever, each watch is limited to 100 pieces and will also be serial numbered. On to the Gundam apparel news then, and with the exception of Banquet's Mobile Suit Gundam Outdoor Taste project, it's mostly going to be accessories this week. So let's see what that Outdoor Taste project has to offer us. First of all, all of the items come in two flavors, either Federation or Xeon, with matching colors and markings. 
there's a jacket for 13,200 yen, 110 US, a waffle long sleeve t-shirt for 6,050 yen, 50 US, a hat for 4,620 yen, 40 US, an apron for 6,050 yen, 50 US, and I heard that especially the Federation one is great for making hamburgers, and a toad bag for 4,950 yen, 45 US. Reservations started on the 10th and everything will be shipping in January. Also from Bankure then, you could order this very nice looking Mafti acrylic logo display thingy for 1,650 yen, around 15 US. Reservations started on the 16th, which is today at the moment of recording, and it is currently slated for a February release. Now, did you ever feel like your bath time was lacking that distinct shard touch? Well, fear not, because on December the 13th, apple-scented char bath salts were released in drugstores across Japan. One package will cost you 330 yen, 3 US, and includes one piece of bath salts with uh, Char's emblem stamped on it, and also one of 21 random bath bromides. Uh, you know that feeling of reading something and you understand all of the words, but you don't actually grasp what they mean. Like, a bromide is just what Japan calls a collectible photograph. There's nothing more to that. And then, well, a bath is a bath, so put them together together and we get collectible photographs of Char that you're supposed to put in your bath because reasons? Also, keep in mind, I might sound a bit confused right now, but that's not just me speculating or making up things based on these two words. Um, they literally say on the product page that they're water resistant for the purpose of actually putting them in your bath. That's, again, not speculation. Like, am I the one who's missing something here or what? Like, I can understand the concept of a shower poster. Like, you want to decorate your shower like you decorate the walls in your house. Like, that has... I can see why you'd want to do that, but I don't really see a reason for having pictures of Char floating around in my bathtub. Like, at least if they were pictures of Meirin, I And staying with the Char theme, reservations opened up for a super high-class titanium Char seal set. Now, before we get to the price of this luxury item, let's talk about the features that it's got. The stamp itself is made out of pure titanium and has been laser engraved with Char's personal insignia. This can then be stored inside of a miniature briefcase which also has Char's insignia on it, although they don't confirm if that is actually titanium as well, and it also carries the ink. And then finally, you get a card talking about Char and a voucher to have your own seal made to be put in the thing so you can use it for official purposes. All of this then can be yours in January for the low price of 42,900 yen, which is a little under $400. Reservations are open as we speak. And when seals are still a requirement to sign contracts, it doesn't really surprise me that high-end seals are still very much a thing. I'm just glad we use pens to sign things instead. Pens that can be stored in this pen case that is currently up for pre-order and available in three colors. Earth Federation Space Forces Blue, Principality of Zeon Green, and Char's Custom Red. They'll set you back 1,980 yen apiece, around 15 US, and are currently slated for a May release. On to the Gundam Cafe news then, where their online store started selling the G Gundam Love Love Champion Instant Curry set for 594 yen, or around 5 US. For the people in Japan then who want less, 
instant food, you can go to the Gundam Cafe to get the special New Year's menu, which will be available starting December 26th. You can get a bowl of soba noodles with some tempura, veggies and an egg, or in short, one of the most traditional Japanese New Year's dishes. Um, basically, the dish is meant to bring you a good fortune and good health for the new year. You can also go for zoni, um, or matcha soup, or senzai, a red bean soup. And you might be wondering, how are these things Gundam themed? Well, uh, you can get them with a Gundam Monaka. Stop asking difficult questions and have a look at this other New Year's event they've got going on, the Gundam Seed inspired Gundam Cafe New Year 2022, which will also start on December 26th. And how is this food Gundam inspired, you might ask? Um, well, you can tell that the food is totally Gundam inspired by the fact that there's Gundam characters next to it. Stop asking difficult questions and take one of the original coasters you get with every dish, and also with every drink. Um, which are also totally Gundam inspired, by the way. Of course, no special event would be complete without extra stuff to buy. There is a drink bottle for 1,430 yen, a bit over 10 US, acrylic stands for 990 yen a pop, 9 US, small magnet badges for 385 yen each, 3 US, a big magnet badge for 495 yen, 4 US, and a smartphone stand for 1,430 yen, again, a bit over 10 US. And that has been all for this week's Gundam News. As always, a big thank you to the Patreon supporters. I hope everyone watching has a great evening, and I'll see you all next week with more Gundam News.